unlike anywhere else I've ever experienced. I'm so scared. I genuinely would say you, you can't miss this. Um, it's so, so amazing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, this is a really exciting one. I have been invited to Latvia with the Latvian Tourism Board for the midsummer celebrations. So we're gonna go well and truly off the beaten track and go and explore Latvia. I have now arrived at the Hilton Garden in Riga. It took me only 15 minutes from the airport, 20 minutes, and it was about 24 euros. The flight as well, super quick. So I came from Edinburgh and it was about two and a half hours on the flight. So literally up and down, really, really easy. But yes, I'm here now and I'm gonna get in that bed because it looks really cozy and start my day tomorrow in Riga. Good morning. First, oh, what floor is it? First floor. I am just going to get some breakfast and then I'm heading off for a walking tour with a local guide. We started the tour at this famous clock tower where people from all over Riga come to meet. My guide also told me that her parents and grandparents had both met here. This is the Freedom Monument. It's one of the most important monuments in Latvia as it represents the freedom of the people. It was opened in 1935 and it's also tradition for newlyweds to come and take photos here. It's also been visited by many famous foreign leaders. Riga was officially founded in 1201 and is based on the banks of the river Daugava. It used to be a much smaller medieval town and it was based on a much smaller river and that's what the waves on the floor and the benches signify. There's so much history just in this one square and having a local guide really helped to bring it to life. As we wandered further into the city, my guide told me all about the Livonian language that she's fighting to keep from extinction. This part of the defence wall was only rediscovered and renovated quite recently. The front of this church is very different to the back as the tower had been destroyed so many times, including during the Second World War. One side is Baroque and the other is Gothic. This is the Town Hall Square. It's a 13th century market square that was destroyed in World War II and many of the buildings have since been reconstructed. You can see the House of the Blackheads here, rebuilt in 1999, which is now a museum, but the front is truly beautiful. Next to the square, my guide showed me the memorial to remember the deported people from Latvia during the Second World War and to honour the soldiers tragically killed. It's an important symbol of freedom and is extremely relevant in the world today. It's said that if you go in the middle of the monument, you can hear a cracking noise and the text means to remember. As we continued through the town, we wandered into a small celebration to mark the build-up to the traditional festival of Midsummer, one of the biggest holidays in Latvia. This got me excited for what was to come, as I was due to celebrate Midsummer with a local family the following day. There were stalls selling local goods and foods, such as bread and honey. People celebrate Midsummer by getting out into nature, so a lot of people tend to leave the city behind to enjoy the longest day. The men traditionally wear crowns made of oak leaves and the women head out into the fields to pick wildflowers before turning them into flower crowns. I'll be showing much more of this later in the series. We then made our way to the very famous Three Brothers building. It's made up of three houses next to each other which form the oldest collection of houses in Riga. Number 17 is the oldest built at the very end of the 15th century. On the 1st of April 2020, the three brothers were awarded a European Heritage label, the first site in Latvia to receive this. Thank you. 
We then came across a statue called The Ghost. It's situated between the Swedish Gate and the War Museum. It's open to interpretation, but it's quite creepy to come here at night. This large building was one of the towers in the large defence wall. This tower is named the Powder Tower, as according to the legend, it always smelled like gunpowder, which makes sense. And this is Jacob's Barracks, covered with the emblems of all the cities and towns in Latvia. As we wandered through Basikalna Park and left the old city, we discussed the different architecture styles that can be seen around Riga. From Baroque to Renaissance and the history of the country, there is much to see and learn. These buildings show a perfect example of Art Nouveau. The basic inspiration around this is nature. These buildings are based around this and trying to bring nature into the cities. We laughed as there is a statue of a woman who looks like she's taking a selfie. Let me know in the comments if you can spot it. I just had a really good walking tour and now I'm gonna go and find Adita who is the representative from the Latvian Tourism Board. Um, so we're going to have some lunch um, and I'm just walking there now. <laughs> I learned so much about the architecture and the culture. There is so much rich history here. It is absolutely incredible. And honestly, all of the buildings are completely different and you can go on a tour and see all of the different generations and centuries through the architecture. just had lunch with Ajita. Food was amazing and the place was so pretty as well. It was so good. I got some cool views up there and now I've just wandered down the road. She told me to find some mosquito repellent spray for staying in um, the countryside. So I've just grabbed some of that and then come and got myself a bubble tea. Okay, so this company was really famous in Latvia for the chocolate. Uh, so I thought I'd try some. I found it in a local store. So yeah, I'm gonna give that a go as well. I'm gonna make a quick cup of tea, post some reels, and then head out to explore the city a bit more and have some dinner. Ajita told me to come to these funky market kind of food place area. Um, so I followed her directions and I'm gonna check out what it's like inside. <laughs> vibe that was so cool i feel like it's such a cool place to come for drinks with people some street food as well um there was loads of like younger people so like 20s like late teens 20s which was really nice it looked like a, a place where like the locals kind of come to hang out um, and it's quite hidden it's literally behind this tiny door there's a few of those electric scooters outside the front as well just here can see. Um, I've travelled around on them before in Norway and Finland but it seems like they have them over here as well which is pretty cool because they're such a good way to get around. But yeah it was good, very cheap um, from my hotel which was the Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, it was literally like four euros in a bolt so this is so cheap and easy to get to. The food was really cheap too. Do you know what's really cool as well? At the moment because it's in the summer and Latvia is so high up you actually, <laughs> high up on the planet, not like mountains, um, you actually get a lot of light. These are the longest days and the shortest nights at the moment, hence it being midsummer. But it means that you get so much daylight. So this, this is currently nearly nine o'clock at night. And I noticed yesterday that it didn't get dark, properly dark until probably one in the morning. Even at midnight, I was coming in a taxi and it was still like sun setting so and like light enough that you could walk around 
So this is such a good time to come because you can really make the most of the days and spend time just exploring whilst it's still light, especially as a solo traveller, that's very handy. 10, okay. So this is what I mean when I say it's 10 o'clock at night and look how light it still is. The sun hasn't even set yet. You have so much time for activities. <laughs> Good morning guys, so today I am about to go and get my rental car and I'm going to be driving up to this place, going to try and stop off for a nature walk and then heading to a castle as well before we head to Alina's house for midsummer. I'm not going to lie, I'm very very nervous about driving on the other side of the road. I've never done it before. Um, and I'm also such a wimp with driving. <laughs> Maybe I should do a live stream just in case. <laughs> I think it's this one or this one. I'm so scared. But hey, we'll give it a go. There's so many buttons. Oh. Can't even reach the pedals. Oh, no. Everything's so weird in this car. Why is there so many buttons? How do I turn the lights on? Oh, the lights are on. Guess the lights are staying on. Ah! They're using technology to really bring to life some of the history as well. You can't miss this, it's so good. <laughs> 